everybody, this is Dr. Carmen Bryan and welcome to my YouTube channel, Redefining Yourself, a program where I talk about overcoming narcissist abuse. Please forgive me, I'm a little hoarse this morning. I was trying to fix my voice before I came in, felt like I'm back in the military, like I've been gargling with a box of rocks. And so I tried to fix it so at least you can hear me. And then I try to give my voice a break. So please forgive me. Hopefully you still understand everything that I have to say. Just a little scruffy uh, this morning. But to all the new YouTube subscribers, I'm so honored. Thank you for being here with me. Thank you for finding something valuable that I have to say that may help you in your process of healing, your process of becoming aware of what narcissism is and how it has affected you. And even in the process, you know, whether you've gotten out of the relationship, now you're trying to understand, you're trying to recover, you're trying to heal. And, you know, in the beginning, when I first made the channel, I made the channel specifically focused on females because that who that is who was reaching out to me. That is who was coming into my private practice to seek counsel was more females most of the males were not you know uh, and and if you read statistics you know um, male when it comes to the male <clears throat> gender or when it comes to the men in general uh, the uh, domestic violence statistics is very low because it's very underreported when it comes to men uh, but you know since I've come on this channel um, the men the king started stepping up they started stepping up and started sharing their experiences with us and so I really changed the intro because of the fact that the men started coming forward and saying hey I've been through it too and I'm not ashamed to tell you and so thank you so much because the men are teaching me how they feel I'm not a man I've never been a man so I don't know how a man think I can only go by what I've studied excuse me so much what I've studied what men have taught me in reference to how men think and how men behave and things that men go through you know and so that helps me even in my clinical setting <clears throat> but you men have come on this channel the kings have come on this channel they come out in in, in numbers they have described their experiences with a narcissist, which is very much like our experiences. It's just that they're dealing with females, you know, or even how they feel, <clears throat> how they were made to feel in the process of being abused the way that they were. And the average person would not suspect that a man would be abused, that it's almost impossible. I've had people ask me, um, and I've, I've talked to uh, teenagers where they're like, men can be abused too. <clears throat> Most definitely. Yes, they can. And thank you, King, so much for coming out on this channel. And then even putting in your input when you come, when I come on live on Sundays, you guys put out the input. You encourage the women and the women are encouraging the men. Thank you guys so much. You guys are an awesome tribe that, that is on this YouTube channel. And to the queens out there, thank you so much. Thank you guys for interacting with me and sending me emails, questions. And you guys really came through and are coming through uh, with sending me your emails in reference to um, connecting with the um, the uh, the lady that I have connected with um, who would like to collaborate and um, collect data, talk to you guys in reference to your experiences of being with a narcissist, especially the different age groups. Um, and she is a public uh, professional uh, writer and she wants to get your input because she would like to write so we can get this information out there. So you guys are really coming through with all the emails. Give me a moment so I can reply to each one of you. <clears throat> I'm putting the list together. So I'm putting everybody on a document format so I can send it all because a lot of you guys, you know, I thought I was just going to forward each email, but I don't think that that's going to happen. So what I'm going to do is take all your information, put it on a, a Word document, and I'm going to send that information. But as I do that, I will, to each one of you that are sending me emails, I will try to make sure that I express my appreciation to you guys. Thank you so much for being here and thank you for sharing your stories. And so today I wanted to respond to one of the um, viewers where she wanted me to elaborate about the covert narcissist. If you go through my videos, and it's about 100, I didn't even realize that was that many videos there. Uh, but if you look through um, <clears throat> the collection of videos that I have, I did talk about the cluster B personality. I even talked about the subtypes, um, you know, where we talked about the... Um, uh, the subtypes, um, uh, I can't recall what the name of the video was. I talked about the, the subtype of narcissism and I also talked about the cluster B um, diagnosis in the DSM. And so <clears throat> do know that on Sundays when I come on, a lot of times um, I am a clinician and a good clinician goes and checks their work. Um, for, for a lot of us who have matured and, and, are, and as you know, have been doing it for a while, we can pick up on symptoms and then we can write diagnosis. I always try to go check my work, just like we learn in college, I always try to go check my work to make sure, hey, these symptoms look like this, so I go pick up the DSM to make sure. And so a lot of times when you do ask questions, I don't have the DSM sitting in front of me, I'm gonna try to bring it with me um, this Sunday to have it with me, but usually I don't bring the DSM, so when I answer a question, if it's a question that I really want to go look into the DSM and read and interpret for you, sometimes I kind of hold off on that question because I want to make sure that I give you factual information and not just my 
opinion. Uh, a professional opinion is one thing, but a personal opinion is something else. Is what I think and what I believe. No, you guys are wanting to know facts. You guys want to know truth, facts. What does the book say? How do you know? Explain it to me. And so I really appreciate you guys because you challenge me and you make me better as a clinician and as a coach. So I really appreciate you guys. So I did have someone ask me a question in reference to a covert narcissism <clears throat> to kind of elaborate on that. And I'll elaborate on the other ones later on, but to elaborate on the covert narcissists. So you do know that you have the overt narcissists, which are very, uh, they're very uh, obvious. You know, those are usually the low range narcissists, meaning those are kind of the immature. They don't have any control of their emotions. They don't, you know, it's very obvious. They're very, very obvious. Those narcissists, you can almost pick out like, I guarantee you that's a narcissist and you can watch them and you can almost pick out the symptoms. And so out of the nine symptoms of narcissism, it takes five uh, to clinically diagnose someone with um, narcissistic personality disorder or NPD. Um, if you find one with all nine symptoms, those are dangerous people. Those are ones that are just totally locked into their mind. Um, so do know like with a uh, covert narcissist, covert narcissist is harder to, um, harder to pinpoint. Those are harder to pick up on because a lot of them hide behind false humility. Um, and a covert narcissist, um, you know, uh, and, and and if you would like to, you can also go to Psych Central. Uh, Miss Maria B B B Daniels uh, wrote a uh, wrote in here about the five signs of um, covert narcissism, and so I want to go in and kind of elaborate and just to give you because there's more, and so I try to try to find you know ones that kind of agree to how I think or what I what I believe, um, and some people have some good information, so I'm not the only one with the information. That doesn't mean I know everything. I don't know everything. I still learn and I grow as I teach you uh, because I go and research before I come and talk. So I learn things as I go, uh, and I learn a lot from you guys as well. Um, and so these are five five signs, but a lot of you have more experience with, with car, you know, some of us have experience with the covert narcissist where we can add to this list. And so this is not limited to five, just know that there probably is more. Some of you can just keep adding and keep adding and keep adding. Uh, and so in here it says, um, uh, first of all, let me go. Um, a covert narcissist, you have those that are extrovert, and then you have some that are introvert. Um, and a lot of times with the introverted ones, um, you know, their presentation is very shy, very quiet. They don't say very much. You, you know, you would never guess that that would be a covert narcissist. Those are more of the introverted um, narcissists. Then you do have those covert narcissists that are extroverted. Those are the ones that you will find that are very, um, you know, in the community. These are very they present themselves as very humble people that will give the shirt off their back that tries to help the homeless, that try to do the, you know, these are the ones that you may even see in public positions of helping um, those that are in the medical field, those that are in the mental health field. You have a lot of narcissists. I hate to say this about my profession and I apologize on our behalf. You know, I'm not one of them, but you have a lot of narcissists in the mental health field. This is where they get plenty of supply because all of the people that come in depend on the, nar uh, not the narcissist, depend on a mental health professional to know what they're talking about, to help you get back on your feet, you know, and the thing that we have to teach and I teach interns is that never, you know, when you're helping people within the counseling field, never help them to a point where they're dependent on you. You teach them how to be uh, autonomous or you teach them how to think for themselves. Don't pick up all the phone calls all the time and solve their problems for them. Don't get into a position where they have you working harder for them than you are, than they are working for themselves. And so a lot of the narcissists, covert narcissists that are within the mental health profession, they love it because you depend on, you know, us to help you through. And we understand that. And we have to be very sensitive with that because you're heartbroken, you know, uh, emotionally, mentally, you know, your soul is wide open and we have to be very, very empathetic, very compassionate. And we have, but we have to be strong and helping you get back on your feet. A lot of people within the counseling field, because you're so, I'm not, the, the clients are so hurt and so wide open. They latch onto, you know, a therapist because we're compassionate. You know, it seems like you connect with us. It seems like, you know, and you know, hopefully you do build rapport with us, but connect like you're my only friend. And the thing that us therapists would have to do is like, you know, I'm not your friend, I'm a professional. Always have to put up boundaries, especially when you 
you're dealing with hurt people and people coming out of narcissistic relationship, but a narcissistic, a covert narcissist therapist doesn't mind. They get fuel out of the fact that you find them so important in your life that you can call them and, and they cross boundaries, even within the mental health field, they cross boundaries, um, ethical violations, you know, they just do what they want to do, but their whole thing is to get supply and to get clientele to, um, <clears throat> to depend solely on them. Remember, they have that God complex. And so they depend on you to depend on them. And so in uh, uh, with a covert narcissist, those that present themselves as very humble or even the introverted ones, they present themselves as very humble, is that sense of false um, humility. And so what they'll do is they will present them. So you can read some of this. I'm just adding to it. I'm just adding my own flavor to it. But um, that, so false humility, she says here, false humility um, is actually a form of pride. Um, but will be shown in a self-depreciating way. Narcissists will play victim to put themselves down so they bait you into complimenting them. So remember, a narcissist is always the victim. They're, they're never the victor, they're always a victim. Uh, and so what they do is that they'll, they'll down themselves. I'm not that pretty as you are, you know, and think about it, it sounds like they're giving you compliments. I'm not as pretty as you are, I'm not as smart. I wish I was as smart as you were. You know, I wish, you know, I wish I had a career like you. I wish I have, you know, um, uh, you know, and, and I wasn't, I'm not that smart. You know, I came from here and when I was in my last relationship, but this is what he did or this is what she did, you know, and what they, what they, what they're hoping, what they're fishing for you to do is to compliment them. You know what? And, and think about it in the mental health field, <clears throat> this is something that we do, you know, okay. So why do you think that way about yourself or, you know, or to give me some proof that, that, that is, you know, and so we work very hard to help you see the value in yourself. And so a narcissist will come in and play on that. And you'll notice that it'll get to a point where it almost becomes just just obnoxious. You know, you can do it in the beginning, you can tell someone, you know, but when they do it all the time, it's almost like, okay, this is starting to become annoying. That's a red flag. Because now you're starting to see, okay, something's not right about this. They're always the victim. They're always hurting. They're all, everyone has always done them this way. They don't, and they're constantly, it's like they're sucking you dry. That's why ladies, before you get into another relationship, if you're dating, a, a, and this is for the kings as well, you know, when you have a woman that's really needy and always needing you to tell her that she's, now a woman likes to be complimented. Now, you know, just put it out there. A woman likes to feel, you know, safe and, you know, with a man, you know, we don't want to go to the movies and, and, and we're crying and you crying harder than us in the movie or, you know, or it, it's a horror movie and we got to protect you. You know, we want to feel safe. We want that strong man to make us feel safe. You know, and most women want that. Uh, and, you know, we, we, we enjoy, women are just a little tender. You know, some of us, you know, some of y'all thugs, you know, I'm not going to lie to you. And some of us have been in the military, but there's still a gentle part to a female. And, you know, for a man, you know, we, we enjoy the compliments, you know, not over complimenting, but, you know, we enjoy compliments you know um but when it gets to a point where and i'm just talking to the men right now you know but when it gets to a point where a female is almost needy like you didn't you didn't compliment me today you didn't tell me you love me you know um you didn't text me to tell me how beautiful i was you know do you love me do you still love me okay first of all she probably needs counseling because there's something going on with her self-worth or number two you might be dealing with a narcissist but when it gets to a point where you have to constantly con and it starts to drain you and you know but no one ever cared about me you're the only one that does you know and then you're constantly constantly having and it starts to drain and females the same way you know when a man is like they're 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 it's like that false humility everyone has done me wrong and, and they're constantly constantly the victim. They're never, they're like, there's something like what is going, that's a red flag. I'm not saying everybody's a narcissist. Some people do have some emotional issues that need to get into counseling. But when it gets to that point, it's that false humility. Um, but, but it's a bait to get, it's a, it's a, it's a bait on the, on the, um, on the fishing line to get you to compliment them. And so, and then there's another thing they will say, uh, they will say they are doing things because they want to, but they're actually secretly um, a seeking approval. So that's fuel to them. They need the compliments and they need constant approval, constant approval, constant approval. Well, if you get to a point where you can't make decisions for yourself or if that person can't make decisions for themselves, you know, and they constantly need people approval, you know, that's a red flag. And a narcissist is like that too. They constantly need your approval, constantly need your approval. But that's just the bet, that's that false humility. Um, and so there, she says here, the goal is to let you know that, um, to let you know they are important and seek high status positions. Yet they disguise themselves in humility. 
which is, uh, isn't is anything like the inner humble character of one who puts others before themselves. Their goal is to make sure that they are stroked for their efforts. So everything they do, they got to make sure that they let you know. You know, I just gave to charity and you know, I go out there and I've given, you know, a car or I've, I've given this count. So humble people that really do things out of their heart do not discuss what they do they just do it you know whether you go out and feed the, the homeless whether you go out and you give people money you know whether you help someone that's in need or you know humble people do not discuss the things that they do <clears throat> humble people don't have to go and, and have to get your approval or have to get a, a oculate or a pat on the back for what they do but a narcissist will portray this humble and they like well you know i'm not trying to brag you know i'm not trying to look arrogant or anything like that i just want to you know just use this as an example but you know i did this and that and this and this and this this, this. and so that's a red flag you guys that's false humility and so a covert narcissist you know they will show that sorry you guys they will they will express that false humility humility but now that you're aware of it now you can pay attention to it another thing you already know uh, they lack empathy and so narcissists will ignore any valid concerns that you may have they will choose to follow their agenda in every circumstance because they are selfish they don't want to learn compassion and want to stay isolated and withdrawn they will ignore you when you aren't feeling well <clears throat> but want to be doted on when you're not well there's no meeting halfway since the only the only want to be served and not to serve. A humble person is a person that's able to serve. A person in a high position always needs to remember that you're in that position. You're in a position of power to help other people. You know, a narcissist doesn't see that. They see themselves in a higher position to, to for more people to worship them, more people that do for them, the more people that serve them. You know, if I get into a high status, I have a limo driver, I have a maid, I have people to cook for me, I have people that, you know, would do things for me. They don't look at it as, you know, you know, you don't have to do that for me, let me do something for you. Those are humble people, you know, but a narcissist is not that way. And then that lack of empathy is like, you know, that really hurt my feelings. And you'll notice that you can say something and it's like the whole conversation is diverted back onto them. You know, I broke my neck and I'm paralyzed from my neck down. And a narcissist is like, well, you know, you're always trying to seek attention. You always want somebody's uh, 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 empathy. You always want someone to pay attention to you. Like literally I'm in a wheelchair and I'm a quadriplegic. And they're like, you know, see, you're always trying to get people's attention. You know, think about that. How insulting is that? You know, and you're looking at them like, what in the world is wrong with you? But a narcissist actually thinks like that. You know, I lost my arm. I need to go find my arm. Well, you always thinking about yourself. You know, your arm is not that important, you know, but look at me and look what I've went through and look at this and look at this ingrown toenail and look at this broken fingernail, you know. So it's almost like it drives you crazy because in your mind, you're thinking like, what is wrong with this person? Like, what is wrong with this person? You know, how can you compare this to that? But the thing about it is, is a lot of you spend too much time and energy arguing with them because you don't recognize what you're dealing with. And so a lot of you, you, you get exhausted. You know, you, it's like you're going crazy. It's like, what is wrong with this person? I know something's wrong. I know other, but when you're dealing with a covert narcissist, a lot of times people don't know that's what you're going through behind closed doors. And so a lot of you are, are, are it's, it's going over in your mind and mind and you are thinking so much on how to explain stuff. They, I need to explain this. You don't have to explain anything. That's what they want you to do. They want you to explain all the time because they want you to run yourself crazy. Um, so let's another one is immature responses. Um, narcissists are highly sensitive and take offense to, at simple uh, criticism. And remember, I think I was talking to a gentleman here on live. Um, I was, uh, uh, he had a carpet cleaning business and he's in, in California. And him and I were talking about um, uh, uh, constructive criticism. You know, when, when you are a business owner, whether, you know, like myself as a clinician or uh, him, for example, with the carpet cleaning, you want people to give you their, um, uh, uh, you know, their opinion that, so that you know how to provide services better. A hairdresser, you jack somebody's head up, hey, they don't talk about you and you're going to lose clientele because nobody's going to want to come to you because their head is jacked up. They may not say anything to you, but they're sure going to talk about you. Girl, don't go over there and get your hair done. Or a barber that jacks your head up, you know, your hairline is back here. Now that's funny. But you're they to cut your, you know how they line your hair up real nice. And some barbers, they'll just keep on because they want that neat. But what happens is they'll keep going back instead of letting it grow and you just stay here. But they want that neat appearance, so they keep going back. And so what ends up happening is your hairline is way back here. So a lot of, now gentlemen, some of you guys will just speak up and say what you got to say. But there are some that won't say anything and just won't come back. But then you don't dog the barber out. Don't go to that barber. That barber will jack your head up. Hairline be all the way in the back of your neck. 
that's funny but um but think about it and so uh with it with, but you need that feedback you need you know people that are in business people that are doing services public services for people you need that feedback so that you know how to perfect your quality of service sometimes people are not very nice at how they say what they say but you got to have tough skin when you are a business owner when you are out there providing services you got to have tough skin and you just have to know okay i need to do this better i need to work on this better you know even in a mental health field you're dealing with people's minds and soul and so people will give you feedback you know and i encourage feedback you know teach me how to do it better uh, but a narcissist they take that as an insult it makes them feel like I, you know, I'm not as perfect as I present myself. So now they'll reverse it and they'll attack, they'll attack you. So they're very sent, they're highly sensitive because they create this image of perfection. And so you start tearing down that image of perfection, you're going to get attacked. You may as well prepare for that. Uh, they magnify, they magnify a perceived or real offense more than it deserves. They're not able to dialogue, but deflect blame onto others for their reactions. So they react and they'll blame you like, you're the one who made me feel this way. Had you not have said this or had you not have said this, all I said was you had toilet paper on the bottom of your shoe. So what are you trying to say? So what are you trying to say that I'm an irresponsible? They'll actually tell you how they actually feel. But then you take responsibility like, I didn't say that. Oh, so you calling me, you calling me a wimp? I didn't say that. They're telling you how they feel, but they're making you responsible for how they feel. You know, so so basically, oh, so you're going to tell me that because you think you're better than me? No, they think you're better than them. Um, I remember teaching my daughter a long time ago when, you know, when they're little and little boys pick on, pick on, you know, pick on the girls or the girls pick on the girls. And um, I remember um, she has these really big green puss in boot eyes. And so the little girls were picking on her and they were like, oh, you think you better than us because you got green eyes. Oh, you think you real pretty, you know? And I had to tell her at a very young age, I said, they're jealous. And so when they make comments like that, they're telling you what they what they like about you, but they don't want you to think they like that. And so when they say, oh, you think you're pretty? No, I wasn't thinking that, you know, but thank you for the compliment. Oh, you think you're all that because you got green eyes. So basically you want green eyes. You can buy them anywhere you go. So I really appreciate the compliment. So think about a narcissist does the exact same thing. And when you, you know, give them a simple criticism about something, hey, you know, you didn't stack these papers right, or hey, you know, um, you might want to get your engine checked. Oh, so you call me, you act like I don't know what I'm doing. So, you, so you're telling me that I'm stupid? All the stuff that they're saying, they're deflecting. Well, they're not deflecting, they're projecting it on you. And what they're doing is making it seem like that's what you're thinking. And so, and you're thinking to yourself, but I wasn't thinking that. But then you spend too much time and energy arguing with them that that's not what you're thinking. Listen to them. They're telling you how they feel about themselves. Um, so they attempt to cover up their anger by pretending things don't, don't bother them. Um, yet their nonverbal body language shows anger even though they don't admit it. Facial expressions. It's almost like that expression on their face that like you are the the scum of the earth, you know, like you are disgusting. And then when you try to present that to them, like, why do you always make those facial expressions? Like, you just hate me. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, you're confused. You know, maybe you have that misinterpreted. And you're thinking to yourself, I know what I see. And that's that gaslighting. Uh, so let's see, simplify, simplification of others' needs. Narcissists will minimize the needs of people around them. They will not explore the details of particular situations because they don't deem it worthy of their time. Nothing is worthy of their time unless it's focused on them. They will label people and deflect blame onto them instead of taking responsibility of their own actions. Give me one minute, you guys. Hey there, how are you, sir? I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Uh, Brian, thank you. Um, excuse me, guys. You guys, my UPS guy came in, so I apologize. Didn't mean to interrupt. But um, so they will label people and deflect blame onto them instead of taking responsibility for their action. They reduce complex issues to simple ones in order to brush them aside as stupid or useless. They don't want to be bothered with factual logic, only their own limited scope of what is important so as not to invest their time or energy in anything contrary to their personal agenda. Remember, no one is smarter than them. They have all the information. Um, if they're, they're headed, they're, they have an agenda and, and they're, have a, they're, they're on a mission. So anything that deflects or anything that takes away from what they're thinking or makes them look stupid, or makes them look like you don't know everything. Simple things like, um, I remember this lady was um, telling me about, she was having a conversation with her narcissist and he was t uh, she was talking about the jowls. You know, the jowls, if you look in the dictionary, the jowls. And she said something about the jowls. The narcissist had a fit because he hadn't heard that word before. And had a fit and said that word was made up. She doesn't know what she's talking about. She's like, it's in the dictionary. He's like, you're stupid. You're always trying to make me look stupid. You know, but that's not even a word. That doesn't even exist. So she went and got the dictionary to show him that the word existed. 
and he started having a temper tantrum and wouldn't come over to the book to look at the book. And she said, it's in the book. And he had a temper tantrum and he deflected and the conversation ended up being something about not cleaning the house. Totally opposite from Jowls. You guys go look it up, J-O-W-L-S, from Jowls. Um, but um, so they, you know, so if you, you know, they, they, they assume that everyone is stupid anyway. They assume that the people around them is not is not or are not as smart as they are. And when you can pick up logic or you're like, no, that is not correct because the theory says this or no, that's not correct. I can show you in the book. They literally have they and they won't like you because they will smear campaign you from that point forward or they will harass you or they will like uh, torment you. Really? But um, you'll know they'll fight. They'll argue, you know, totally deflect away from the conversation. And all of a sudden you come out the conversation thinking to yourself, I think I'm crazy. Maybe that doesn't exist, you know. But the thing is, is that they can never be seen as wrong or imperfect. Uh, and so, you know, and they're, they're, remember that they connect with people and they mimic people. So they only have limited knowledge. If you've been to medical school or if you've been to uh, law school and you are a full-fledged lawyer with that jurisprudence uh, degree, or if you are a, say, a psychiatrist, psychologist, or a brain surgeon, you know, they get just enough information to be surface to sound like they know what they're talking about. But when you get into the meat of the conversation where you're really talking about the details of certain things or that, that you know, they can't hang with you. And so they'll make you seem like you don't know what you're talking about. They'll research just enough information to show you that you're wrong without going in detail. And you know, when it comes to like a law, law school, you know, people go to law school and they learn different cases. They learn different laws. They learn, you know, many, many things. And so you can present one thing, but then you can, you know, a, a lawyer or a person that has been in law school is able to say, yeah, I understand what you're looking at. But at the same time, you have to remember that this and this and this law was created, this and that and this, and that's how they came about. Or even in the mental health field, yeah, I know that's what you think, you know, and I can understand why you would think that because of this and that and this, but you have to take in perspective that, da 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 da. That's why I say is be careful when you read the DSM because what you're reading is written on that page and you're reading it based Based on your perspective, really limited knowledge and education. You have to remember that those people that work in the mental health field either have master degrees or doc degrees in that field and have um, been in an internship and a practicum so they can see what these diagnoses, what is written on that paper is played out. A narcissist reads it and based on their interpretation, they'll tell you how wrong you are. And think about it, why would you sit there and argue with a narcissist? That's like arguing with a narcissist and they're telling you you're not a female or you're not a male. And you know for a fact that you were born a certain way or whatever way you feel, you know. But, but to look at me and say, you're not really a female. And I say, I gave birth to children. Like I literally birthed children. I gave birth and I breastfed children, you know. And they're like, but you're not really a female. Why in the world would you sit there and argue with a person like that? And I'm just using that as an example, an easy example. You know, why in the world would you, you know, argue with an individual like that? That is not called a bun. Okay, what is it called? And they give you some scientific term. Okay, I get that. But at the same time, to be logical, as a bun. You see what I'm saying? So a lot of times you waste your time arguing with a narcissist. Waste of time. And they, and they, um, uh, and um, and and they and they minimize your intelligence because they're intimidated by your intelligence. Uh, remember, they connected with you for a reason. And so, where were we at? Um, so uh, let's look. Um, they don't take responsibility of their own actions. Uh, remember that we talked about that. Um, basically, the stuff that you say is stupid and useless unless it plays into their agenda or it goes along with what they think or it focuses back on them. Other than that, what you have to say has no relevance. Uh, I see it in therapy all the time. Uh, unable to listen. Narcissists tend to shoot from the hip with quick advice and not ask questions during conversation, but instead shut down dialogue so they can min uh, so that so they do the minimum amount. They do not want to expand any energy toward relationships. There you go. They don't care about what you have to say because they want to follow what is best for them, regardless of what you are sharing. In the end, they don't care enough to listen to you. So you are in a one-sided relationship. It's not about you know mutual agreement between the two or mutual respect between two people, You know, being respectful of your boundaries, being respectful of my boundaries. Everything is focused on them. Everything is about them. Uh, so obviously not quiet, not at all quiet or shy people 
um, not obviously not all quiet and shy people are covert narcissists, but these are signs to keep in mind. So she's giving you some signs, and you know that there are more there are more signs than that. You know we can go on and on and on, and some of you can share your own signs of a covert narcissist. So do know that you do have covert narcissists that are um, extroverts, which are more open and in the community and like to you know like to be seen and, and and they have this false sense of humility and just great people so that when you tell people what's going on behind closed doors they don't believe you because there's no possible way that this person could be doing that that's probably you there's no problem then you have those introverted coverts where you don't even know but they have the same they do the same things they just do it in a very quiet way when no they're quiet they're very you know they internalize a lot they're very in they're shy they are really shy individuals but they're not shy at expressing you know um how uh, uh you know uh, the fact that you're stupid they may not say it it's just the look on their face you know the fact that they pay no attention to what you have to say you know it's like that glazed look that they have they stare at you and you kind of know like are you paying attention to me you know or you say something but they yet they do the same thing i heard you i heard you and then they do the exact same thing over and over again uh, one lady was saying that she was talking to her narcissist and told him because she was responsible for paying the lights and so she said we need to you know pres not preserve but we you know hey we got to make sure these lights are turned off you know uh, but over and over and over again she would say she said, i don't get it like do you hear me i said uh, not i said but she said to me um that um uh, uh i said there's a possibility you might be dealing well i did say there's a possibility you might be dealing with a narcissist uh, came back and, and the story was, uh, you know, I kept on saying, I kept on saying, I kept on saying, I don't understand why he didn't believe. And then what ended up happening was, is he finally said, um, do you notice that I don't pay attention to you? So it's very obvious what she was dealing with. Um, and so uh, they don't care. They don't care about your opinion. They don't care about what you feel. They don't care, you know, if you have to spend money. They don't care if they damage something. If you pay for it and they didn't pay for it, they don't mind damaging your stuff, you know. Uh, but if you pay for it, if they pay for it, then, of course, you, you know, it's like reverse. You know, how dare you do And you're looking like, okay, but you didn't, but you did not even um, care about when you did this. Their whole focus is them. You know, their whole focus is them. Um, things like, you know, you have a fever and you're sick or you're giving birth, you know, how can you, you want all the attention, you know, all the attention is back on that narcissist. And so this is what you're dealing with, with a covert narcissist because everything is not obvious. People don't see what goes on behind closed doors. And I remember I had a speaking engagement and on that speaking engagement, we were talking about those women that had murdered um, their abuser. And so, uh, you know, a lot of people have their opinions about that. Do I believe murder is right? Absolutely not. You know, but the only way that they could get out of this um, relationship or get away from their abuser that was holding them really hostage, um, they ended up resorting to murdering them to be free. And they felt more free in prison than they felt free in the, in the home. And so people judge them, you know, you can't murder. And that's true. You know, murder is wrong. I, I get it. But when you're a prisoner in your own home and your children are being abused and no one knows this because the person that's doing it is a, a figure within the public and everybody loves this individual and then they end up being murdered and then the, and no one checks in to see what was happening because these are the coverts. Uh, and one of the things that I said is that it's amazing because in the military, when we were um, military, when I was active duty, you know, we fall under the Geneva Convention, meaning that there are certain rules of war that we have to abide by uh, it, and especially if you are a prisoner of war. Well, one of the rules, excuse me, as being a prisoner of war, excuse me, um, one of the one of the rules in being the prisoner of war is the fact that you always have to try to escape at all means necessary and to help your comrades escape. All means necessary mean that those people that are your tormentors, those that are that, that are uh, the the, uh, the key holders, to, uh, you know, the tormentors, the prisoner, uh, uh, prison guards. You have to do whatever you do. That means even try to kill them to get to safety and get back, get the people out of being held hostage. But then when you kill the 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 prison, the, the uh, enemy, or you you kill the the person that held you hostage and held your comrades hostage, you know, we're held as heroes. You know, we're held as heroes. You get a purple heart, you get a bronze star, you get whatever, whatever, you know, uh, whatever, uh, you know, whatever the, the, the medals are in the different branches of service. You held the hero. You get to wear the medal of, of honor around your neck. People salute you that are civilians, you know, because you escaped and you killed your captors. But yet you have women and men. And, and, and I have not heard the story about men, so I'm just assuming, you know, I know the women's stories, but you have women that have been held captive in their homes by a, 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 a captor, you know, that torments them the same way that they're being tormented in, 
in uh, POW camps, you know, the things that are going on, they're being held captive and they're being tormented. I read some of the stories, I've heard people talk about it, and yet they kill these people to escape with their lives and their children, and a lot of them are put in prison for life because they try to escape. I think that's kind of um, wrong. You know, and that's why there need to be more laws to investigate because some, some women, you know, the biggest thing is that a lot of women never reported it. So they never knew this was going on. And what the first thing that people say, especially in the courts, is why didn't you ever tell anybody? Okay, why didn't we ever tell anybody that we were being abused by a narcissist? Because we didn't know what was going on. Why didn't you tell anybody this was going on? Because it's shameful and it's embarrassing, especially if you, you know, if you're a, a powerful man or woman, or if you, even if you're not powerful, it's just shameful and it's embarrassing what you go through and what, what we allowed, to, you know, what we allowed to happen that we didn't know what was happening until we stepped out and looked at it. And so for someone to ask, why didn't you tell anybody? And arrogant about it. Why didn't you tell anybody? You know, it's very painful. It just re-victimizes the victim. And so hopefully this has helped you guys today. Hopefully this has made sense when dealing with the covert narcissist. Hopefully that answered the question uh, for the subscriber that sent me the question please forgive me um, I'm gonna be go suck on a lemon or something uh, but thank you guys so much for tuning in hopefully this has helped you guys today thank you guys for all the emails thank you for all the questions thank you guys you know for coming through thank you you guys are great I'm telling you you guys have greatness within you just know you have greatness within you you all are going through a different process everybody as a is at a different level of healing some of you are still in the relationship and you have not made your mind up whether you want to stay or you want to go I'm gonna tell you if you stay it's gonna get worse and then sometimes, you know, if you stay, you can also die. And I'm not saying that in all cases, you know, but you're also affecting your children if you have children. You know, so you have to make up your mind. What do you want to happen? And for some of you, it's going to take a while because you have to get this in your system. You have to learn what's going on. They're not going to change. And I know that some of you are still in denial as well because you want to believe the good in this person and what you've seen. There is no good in this individual. They're not going to change. Narcissist does not change. They cannot change. There's no counseling or medication that's going to change them. They're not going to change it will get worse. And so whatever advice I can give you is to get out and save yourself and your children. Thank you guys so much. Please share these videos. If you have not already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Dr. Carmen Bryant, Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. Hit the bell so you know whenever I upload new videos. I usually upload from Tuesday to, to Friday, and I usually come on live on, on Sundays. I've been pretty consistent. Come on live on Sundays between 8 and 9 Pacific Standard Time, which is West Coast time, the California side of the house. Um, I was late this Sunday. Please forgive me. I had uh, obligations to take care of. Uh, but I do try to come between 8 and 9 o'clock. Uh, please tune in. That's an opportunity for you guys to ask any questions you would like to ask, you know, and to interact and support each other. Thank you guys so much. I also have a Facebook page, which is Psychological Health Consultants and Services. Hit the thumbs up. Uh, and I do post videos on both uh, uh, sites. And thank you guys so much for your support. As my friend always says, and I'm going to make a t-shirt. As my friend always says, go and be great.